Just trying to have fun. And not feel guilty. Now, if you've ever been around my family, you would know we love having fun. And we never have to deal with guilt after we've had days of fun. We'll spend money, but we are not spending the mortgage. We're not spending the car payment. We're not spending the kids' food money. We pray that God gives us in abundance so we can have fun. And if you've been around us long enough, you should know how to have fun by just watching. Now, I do need to let you know, everybody doesn't know how to have fun. I've been around some people that suck up all the fun. <laughs> Those people, I don't like being around them because I want to enjoy myself. Yesterday I decided I'm just going to stay in my room and watch TV all day. I got a free week where I don't have to pay for it. And I watched the whole entire two seasons of the new Star Trek. No, some of this stuff is not worth watching. Lots of this gay couple stuff. But, you know, I'm a Trekkie, so I got to know what's going on besides all the gay couple stuff. I'm not anti uh, I'm not anti loving gay people I love gay people I'm against sin of any kind so if you are sleeping around you're just as bad we, we understand just want you to understand it so are we going to talk today about how people have fun and how they feel after they have fun. Then we're going to look at what how God says to have fun because God is not the cosmic party pooper. He's not in heaven saying, thou shall not have fun. Every time I get to travel in other countries, they always get overwhelmed that I laugh. Every time I go somewhere, they're like, we expected you to be so serious. And, and I'm like, what? And you laugh, and you laugh hard, and you really enjoy life. And I'm looking at them like, I don't know how to be that. That's boring. Yeah, oh, this is a holy place. We need it quiet. I'm sorry. I don't think heaven is going to be like that. I think heaven is going to be noisy. I think so. I think there's going to be partying going on. And, you know, and the doors are going to come open. You're going to hear all kinds of sounds and stuff. And God's going to be in his throne saying, go ahead. You know, hey, have fun. This is you're going to worship me. You're going to have fun worshiping. Just trying to have fun and not feel guilty. Father, help me be able to speak this message in a way that everyone can understand. And then afterwards, they will be changed. I ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Remember when having fun was easy. Remember when it didn't take anything for you to have fun? Rain. Let's go play in the rain. Fun. I remember playing in the rain. Today I'll be too scared I'm going to slip and fall. <laughs> you know, I, give, me a, give me a water gun. That's pretty much as far as I'm going to go. Because if I fall, you know, I might be hurting for a while. And that's the only thing that stops me from getting involved. But you do it long enough, you're going to see I'm going to overcome that fear and join you. I remember when I was a kid in Panama, it starts to rain and all the boys would take off all their clothes and stay in their underwear. And the girls too. And we'll go and play in the rain. Can't do that in the United States. You got some sickos. But over in Panama, we did. All the boys and girls outside in their underwear playing in the rain. That was fun. God made rain for fun. My kids don't know rain fun. 
My kids know rain can't have fun because it's raining. Oh, I didn't grow up here. I grew up when it rained, we had fun. So because of that, when it rains, I have a good attitude. Oh, it's raining. Oh, it feels so good when it rains. Oh, I remember having a metal roof and I heard that metal roof sound and it's like, oh, that makes me so sleepy. So I put on a metal roof so I can experience that all over again because rain for me is fun. These kids are having a ball, aren't they? Anyone is telling them, don't play in the rain. You're messing up your clothes. Yeah, no. No, they all have ready to play in the rain clothes. We took a family to the beach for the first time a few years ago and found out they were scared to go in the water. They were scared to go in the water. I didn't have that fear. My kids, they saw water, they ran to it. Elijah was a one-year-old, two-year-old toddler. And we took him to the beach. I wasn't there that day. He went with my wife and my, my father-in-law. And Elijah took off the moment he saw the water. He started running towards the water. And Jennifer told me she was running behind him, trying to grab him. He just took off, and she's running after him, trying to grab him so they can go to another beach. Because everybody around them were naked. Now, Elijah didn't see the naked people. He saw the water. <laughs> and all his heart was set on is the water. Can we go back to where we knew how to have fun and didn't feel guilty after doing it? For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion, as Ecclesiastes 9 and 4. If you're still alive, there is hope for you. And if you need to have a comparison, you can be a living dog, but you're still better than the dead lion. <laughs> We get it. It don't matter how lofty someone is when they're dead. It don't matter if you know the top billionaire in the world. When he dies, you have more than he does because you're still alive. He's finished. There's nothing else he can do. There's still hope for you if you're alive. What an awesome verse, right? Now I'm going to go through some pictures really quickly. Because our biggest problem is what society says is fun. Now what society says is fun, it's not what God says is fun. And God has his laws written in our hearts. So because his laws are written in our hearts, whenever we disobey the laws that are written in the tablets of our heart, we feel guilty. There are certain things that no one has to tell anyone not to do. In every culture, killing is wrong. They haven't, even if they never heard that, thou shall not kill, it's written in their hearts. So when you feel guilty, you're going against the laws that are written inside of you. Oh, man. I, 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 I hope you're prepared. Because society would say, this is okay. It's kind of cool, right? I was watching uh, yesterday on TV, since that's all I did yesterday was watch TV. It's unlike me to do that. I realized I don't want to do it again because I woke up sore. You would think, you know, you don't wake up sore when you're working. Well, yeah, my body's not used to sitting down doing nothing. But I was watching, you know, how they're saying, okay, sit down and watch all these movies. We're going to give you these great movies this week. And Greece was one of them. And in Greece, you know, it starts with uh, Olivia Newton. 
Newton John wearing a long skirt with a uh, with a little poodle uh, on skirt and all that, and she's looking very very normal for the twenties. No, that was the fifties. Fifties. Normal for the fifties. And towards the end, she's wearing the tight black pants with a big old hair and cigarette in her mouth, and that was cool. She went from being girly to I'm going to be cool now. This is the same transition that we get from our youth. I thought about this morning that we have zero youth who have left from their parents to be successful outside of their parents' home. We have zero. No tenemos a ni uno. Probably the best one right now is Kathleen. At least she went and Nino got married. Nino se fue y se casó. We have zero. No tenemos ni They'll ni leave and se van de la they're casa gone. Y you y don't see them at church no anymore. Ven en la iglesia más. They don't care about no coming no back. Because Porque they're going to do what's cool. Van a hacer lo que es oh, pastor's an educator. Oh, I understand. You're going to do your whole 20s. Tu and when 20s. you get to your 30s, you're going to come back with a if I would have, could have, should have. No and now you want to teach the young people how not to make the mistakes that no you've made. Now, I understand. Yo entiendo. But this is what a parent wants for their child. Every good parent wants their children not to go through the struggles that they had to go through. And what do we find? Repeat. 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 Going through the same junk. Why? Because we did not raise a generation of leaders. We raised a generation of followers. Followers follow. Now, we have our Ariel is a leader. But you have our youth who seldom listen to Ariel because they consider, oh, she's a goody, goody. Oh, she's perfect. Oh, she always gets it right. Oh, I know what I'm talking about because I was the goody, goody. I was the same one. Just like her, the youth didn't listen to me. But let's switch the, the script and let's see through Ariel's eyes. Ariel who tries to say fifth, who eats healthy, who studies her Bible, who prays, who fasts, who works, who gives her tithe, has to consider why in the world you don't get sick. And you're doing all the mess you want to do. And then she always has to deal with getting sick. And no one can find what's wrong with her. So let's flip the script. Now, who has the right to judge whom? It's not good when I put it that way, right? Uh, Pastor, just put it back like how we think it. We wouldn't think she's a goody goody. No matter what she has to suffer, we wouldn't think that, you know, she's a perfect child. While she's looking at your life thinking, hey, you don't have to suffer what she suffers. And you are doing nothing. So, we have. A young lady here vaping. Well, that's kind of dumb. Cigarette was bad. Y'all know cigarette is bad, right? Vaping is worse. Vaping was invented to stop cigarette smokers from smoking. But now vaping is more addictive than smoking cigarettes. And not only that, you have no idea what they're putting inside of you. You have no idea what you're putting inside your lungs. There are young people that were fine two months ago, and then they were dead. 
all from vaping. Solo por vaping. So that's dumb. Eso es algo Can we agree with that? Podemos, eh, estar de con esto? It's dumb. Es Why are you going to do that? Qué vas a hacer esto? It's cool. Es oh, really? Oh, sí? Okay, stop for a moment. Para por un Imagine me do it. Si yo lo hago. Am I cool? Yo soy genial. I won't be cool, right? Why? Por qué? Oh, because you're 50. Años. Oh, you got to be young to oh, be cool. Que ser joven para ser <laughs> hey, society, I'm telling La you. We go next one. Esto. ¿Y esto? Who I try to get a picture for this one una foto para and the esto. things that popped up on my screen. En mi <laughs> Lord, deliver me from evil. Sex. El sexo. That's being cool. Esto es, esto es Sex is being cool. Eso es Was watching a commercial on HPV. Commercial en, um, en un, en un Those are warts. Those are words down there. And those words down there have some of them turn out to be cancerous. And Y'all haven't seen the HPV commercials. I'm on the only one I've seen them. Oh, the between the age of 11 and 12 years old. <laughs> Cancer, I'm mad at you. You can't have my children. I have a cure for HPV. Yes, there is a shot you give your child from 11 to 12 years old. So if they're ever exposed to that virus, they won't develop cancer. We understand. I can't tell you in Spanish is a disease. Okay, HPV is a disease. Uh, something, I don't know. I don't even remember what it's called. Human papilloma, thank you. It's a sexually transmitted es una disease. Que se All right, so sexuales. I have Yo a solution for it. Para esto. That's not the shot. Que no es la, la vacuna. Now, <laughs> we can wear a condom, Pastor. Un condom yeah, you can. Sí, te puedes poner. But it's skin on skin. Pero es piel a piel. And if you skin on skin, si piel you can still piel, get it wherever it's not covered. No importa donde no está cubierto. Esa es la okay. enfermedad que le está hablando. I think that's enough, right? Es We understand. Ya entendemos. Here's the solution. Esta es la solución. Get married. Cásate. Stay with your partner. Quédate con tu uh, pareja. That's it. Y eso es todo. You're both loyal to each other. Nobody gets it. Is transmitted sexually. God wasn't planning to give it to you. Why? We gotta knock some boots. Because that's socially esto es acceptable. aceptable. It's more socially acceptable Está than what aceptable it was when I was younger. Que, que I mean, joven, people would do stuff, but hacían, pero era algo silencioso. now they do stuff Ahora, and everybody knows. And they're okay with everybody knowing. Que todos lo saben. I remember we were on a cruise and there was this guy that walked by and my daughter Ariel looked at him and said, man, he's handsome. And then she realized he's holding another guy's hand. And then she got that, oh, man. Well, the nice looking guys got to be gay. I told her, I said, I think you're just attracted to gay people. Because all the guys, she goes, ah, this boy was so cute. I was hoping that he'll ask me for my phone number, but then he asked the other guy for his phone number. <laughs> This is socially acceptable. Guilt. You're going to deal with some guilt, right? Next one. I'm going to have friends. I'm just going to drink with my friends. When my friends ask me to drink, I'm going to drink. I'm just going to have some fun. I'm just going to let loose. I'm just going to go ahead and have some fun. 
Believe it or not, I worry I was your age. Yo era su edad. And at your age, y a su edad, I thought it was stupid. Yo pensaba que era estúpido. I really did. Yo sí. Because I thought yo my greatest quality, mi calidad mejor, my greatest gift, mi, mi mejor is my ability to think. Poder so why am I going to drink something that will take away my best ability mi for a moment? Por un momento. I haven't drank once. Yo Some tomé cheap, una cheap, vez cheap y tomé mucha, beer. Muy, eh, muy My dad did it. Mi papá me lo hizo. He took me to a little bar. Me llevó a un He bar. ordered a 99 cent pitcher él, of beer. Él ordenó a pitcher a beer for 99 cents. 99, 99 cent 99 pitcher a beer. I put that thing no, to my mouth. I thought there was nothing nastier to drink than that. I thought my dad was trying to poison no me. I was like, this is es, nasty. Es he said, you're going to drink it. And you're going to drink the whole pitcher. Before you go out with your friends and pretend to like this and end up getting hooked on it, you're going to do it with me. Now, I haven't tried that with my kids. Because they might like it. Mm-mm. That was nasty. I had a hangover the next day. I woke up and I'm, shh. You know when you put your finger in somebody else's mouth because they're so loud. You're too loud. Why is it so bright in here? Can somebody turn off the sun? Oh, big migraine. Uy, Every migraine. sound was reverberating. Era, era and I thought, this is pensé, stupid. Es I don't want to ever no do this again. I went on a cruise and they Voy decided for Father's Day to buy me an alcoholic el, drink. It was blue. And y'all know I'm partly cheap. Sabes que yo soy muy, uh, they said it was very expensive. Yo soy muy, eh, eh, bueno, so I tried to drink the thing no and I pero me lo compraron. Uh, just a little Traté sip. De tomar un poquito. And man, I, I, I felt like my whole pues well went dry. It just sacó, sucked all the moisture out of me. And I proceeded to drink everybody's boca, water on the table. Because it was nasty. So next time y'all want to buy me a gift, don't make it alcohol. Okay, not a fan of alcohol. All right. <laughs> so why? If you never drank an alcoholic drink, and you got to your 30s and you drank from the very first time, the chances of you becoming an alcoholic is zero. Did you get that? The chances of you becoming an alcoholic is zero. But if you add an alcoholic drink in your teenage years, the chances of you becoming an alcoholic or 60%. What does that mean? You, you dabbling at a certain age, you have told your brain, this is an okay behavior. I can continue to do it. I'm all right. Oh, drugs. Socially, Speaking, I mean, I even watch TV shows to where they, you want to do some weed? Where they actually ask the other person they want to do weed? On a TV show. I was surprised to watch a CBS TV show that is on on TV, and they said the SH word and the F word. That used to not be allowed on regular TV. Now it's allowed. There it's just words. No, words do have weight. They certainly do. 
So today, Hoy, doing drugs is a socially acceptable thing to do. Algo para hacer. Well, how do you feel afterwards? ¿Cómo te sientes después? How do you feel? ¿Cómo te sientes? You did it. Lo hiciste. You feel good. ¿Te sientes bien? I'm not saying what no lies you tell your friends of how you feel. I'm asking you how you feel before you tell your friends, oh, I feel good. How do you feel afterwards? Do you feel like, man, I can conquer the world after you're high? After you had sex, do you feel like, man, I can do anything now? What do you feel like? Honestly, Honestamente, you feel defeated. Te I was talking to this man, con un hombre, and he's Mexican, y él es mexicano, and he, he'll work all day, y él and at the día, end of the day, al final del día, the boss will give him a six-pack of beer, el, el jefe le da, eh, un, and that was his payment. He'll work, el pag, el trabaja, and he'll just give him a six-pack. There you go. Ahí está. And then the next day he'll come back. And at the end of the day, he'll give him a six pack. He'll come back, give him a six pack. His payment was a six pack. Some of y'all are shaking your heads. He will drink one after the other. And then he'll get drunk. And I'll say, well, why don't you just get paid money? Why does he give you beer? And he says, es para ahogar las penas. So that I could drown my pain. Es para que yo ahogue las penas. For me to drown my pain. And I told him. Y yo le dije. Don't you have more pain no the next day? No tienes más más dolor el próximo día. Because you didn't get Porque paid. Porque no te pagaron. You got more bills. Then you drink again. You didn't get paid. You got more. Oh, wait. You didn't get paid again. Now you got more. Uh, this is not working out. Your solution is hopeless. This is what the Bible says. Ecclesiastes 9, 7. Go eat your food with gladness. Donna, that's, that's you right there. <laughs> Donna has taught me how to enjoy food. Man, I, I love presenting new things to Donna and wait for her to eat it and watch every expression that she makes and then listen to the words that come out of her mouth. She has taught me this is how you enjoy food. You've missed it because you've just been sticking it in your mouth, chewing and swallowing. You need to learn from Donna because Donna will look at the food. She will look at the texture and the color and she said, that was good. That was good. She'll smell it. Ella lo huele. Mm, that smells so se ve, good. Se huele tan bien. She'll get a spoon, stick it in there, watch the texture and the color, stick it in her mouth. En la boca. Chew slowly. Ella. She doesn't chew it fast. She She'll chew it slowly as if her ears are listening to the crunch. And then she'll say, mm, 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 that's the best I ever had. I learned from Donna. Stop rushing. Taste your food. Enjoy the food that you're eating. There are some people that don't have this moment you are having right now. Enjoy it. And drink your wine. 
Oh, I'm going to really mess up all the folks that say they don't drink alcohol. It's bad for you. The Bible says thou shalt not drink. Well, I got this from Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verse 7. The Bible says do not get drunk. It does not say do not drink. I'm going to lose some people right now on this one. But again, this is in your Bible. I didn't invent this one. And drink your wine with a joyful heart. Wine is a symbol of joy. When you have wine, you have joy. Some of us need to understand you don't act joyful. Maybe you need to get a hold of some spiritual wine and get some joy in you. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I shall mount up with wings as eagles. I shall run and not be weary. I shall walk and not faint. I need some spiritual drink here. Drink your wine with a joyful heart. If you are an alcoholic, do not drink wine. Did I say it right? If you have a weakness in certain things, don't do it. I don't have a problem with drinking wine because it's medicine for me. I'm telling you, I don't enjoy it. I've tried. I've tried many types of wine. And all of them have something in common. They all taste bad <laughs> to me. All right. For God has already approved what you do. What? What do you mean God has already approved what you do? All right, let me explain it this way. God has already told you what to do so that you have his approval because he's already told you to do these things. The things that he's told you not to do, of course you don't have his approval because he told you not to do them. Very simplistic, right? Sex, is that wrong? If sex was wrong, none of y'all will be here. Sex is not wrong. In the confines of how God created, the confines of God created sex were for the husband and the wife. In that confine of husband and wife, sex is not wrong. The Bible doesn't call it sex, it calls it marriage. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed is undefiled. But homemongers and adulterers, God will judge. I said this verse to somebody, and I had to separate the word. Behold, la palabra. mongers. Los adulteros. En español, en inglés, we understand, palabra, right? Es una yeah, that word is in the Bible. Se separa, es una palabra que significa if you are living to where you just giving it away, that's your definition of their word. You're mongering in that. And adulterers. Wait. You're married and you're sleeping Pero around. You're si in that group eres, too. Eh, si tú eres casado y te estás Adulterers are persona, you're married, but you're not with your mate. No you're with somebody else. Pareja, estás con otro. Marriage is honorable. El matrimonio es and all. En todo. The Bible is weird about that verse because it also says this. And porque también dice, it's better to marry es mejor que se case than to burn. Que se quemen. I can't take it no more. Get married. Si no puede más, Pastor, I'm Pastor, so stressed no puedo. I can't take it. Go get no married. Puedo. Do you take her? Yes. Do you take her? Tú, yes. By the si power vested in me by the state of Alabama. El de Alabama. I pronounce you man and wife. Le, le go away. Pronuncio, eh, y mujer. 
I've done a wedding like that. I sure have. I've done one wedding like that. Pastor, we can't take it no more. We just can't take it no more. We need to get married. When do you want to get married? Right now. Right now? Yeah, right now. Oh, okay. Well, you, you need a witness. Can your wife be the witness? Yeah, she can be the witness. And then I start trying to do a nice little ceremony in my office. No, Pastor, that's too long. We need the short version. The short version? Yes, do you? Yes, do you? Yes. By the power vested in me, by the say I I pronounce you man and wife. Bye. That was their wedding ceremony. You know what? God says in his word, it's honorable. What? ¿Cómo? It's honorable. Es it's honored. Está bien. You're married. Estás casado. Signature, you got married, there ya, you go, bye. Ya, filma aquí, ya eres. All the other stuff, Todas las otras cosas, you're not going to feel good. No te vas I don't care mal. what society no tells you. I don't care how much they try to imprint in you that this is okay. Your heart is going to always feel like something is wrong. Because it's not in the confines of God what God did it. Better a meal of vegetables where there is love than a fatted calf with hatred. Ooh. Better you eating a little bit. Small portions. Enough to just stay alive around people that love you than to get the best food around people that can't stand you. <laughs> Some of you want to eat the best food so you fake it to be around these friends that can't stand you to begin with. They don't like you, but they don't tell you they don't like you. Come on. You're always tagging along. Always. I, when I was younger, I had to tag along. I had to pay for everything. That person never had money. Never had money. Never. Always had to pay for everything. And I didn't really realize it. I didn't realize that they will wait on me until someone let me watch a video. And I'm watching a video going to Six Flags in Hollywood, Florida, which is no longer there. And the young man says, won't you hook a brother up? And the person says, we're not paying for you. We're not Ronaldo. And that hit me like a ton of bricks. What? That's what they say when I'm not around. I'm actually paying for the tag along. And I'd always been paying for the tag along. For his wedding, Para su boda, I paid for his tux. Yo pagué por su tux. He didn't have the money. Él no tenía el for my wedding, Para mi boda, I paid for his tux. Because he didn't have Él the no money. Tenía el dinero. Realize, Me di cuenta. tag alongs Los que siguen siempre. get a little cumbersome after a while. De, 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 después de un tiempo, ellos son molestos. It's like, you trying to be around people that don't even like you. You're trying to do stuff that you know is wrong so you'll fit in. But don't realize it's better for you to be around people who love you and get a little than to be around people that hate you and get a lot. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. See, whenever I start to think I want to have fun, even my fun needs to bring glory to God. Come on, do hear me. Even my having fun has to bring glory to God. I've taken my family on, on lots of trips. And now my oldest don't like going on trips. He just rather just stay home. 
It's not like me. I like to have fun. My wife likes to have fun. Most of my kids like to have fun. But with all our having fun, we always have fun the right way. We don't skip the line. We don't steal the Bob the Apple thing, you know, the candy apple or <laughs> or what whatever stuff they sell in the fair, you know. Y'all remember I went to Disney and I lost my wallet three times. Three times in one park, I lost my wallet. And every time I was able to get my wallet back with all the money in it. I had cash money in my wallet. And I got my wallet with all the cash money still in it three times. Well, Pastor, how did you keep on losing your wallet? Well, one time it came out of my pocket in the ride. I didn't know until I had to go buy something. I can't forget. I can't remember the other two times. I think it's probably the same thing. Well, why didn't anyone steal your money? Because I wasn't going to reap what I didn't sow. Yo no iba a cosechar. I'm mindful that anytime someone drops money, I run them down. Hey, you drop this. I remember one time I had a roll of hundreds. I went into the the uh, room, the dressing room in the mall and someone that was there before me left a roll of hundreds sitting right on the counter. I left my clothes right there, grabbed the roll, started running after the person. Hello, excuse me, excuse me. They saw me, started moving faster. And I'm, I'm, I got to the point I'm almost sprinting in the mall. Stop running, I have your money. Oh, thank you. Had to run them down to give them their money back. That's what I've sowed. That's what I want to reap from. Everything that you do. Now let's stop and consider. Throughout your day. Do you do everything to bring glory to God? I told you yesterday I, I decided I'm just going to stay in my room I'm not going to do nothing. How did that bring glory to God? You shall keep the, year, the Sabbath holy. You shall do no work upon that. That's what I said to myself yesterday. Today I'm going to keep my Sabbath. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to stay in my room and just rest. Did I feel guilty? No. No. Didn't feel guilty. No guilt. Didn't look at my family. Excuse me for taking a day off yesterday. No, no guilt. No guilt. Woke up this morning. My ow, everything hurts. I don't think I'm going to do that again because it hurts. My body's not used to doing nothing. <laughs> Everything. Wedding in the Bible were a seven day feast. Seven days. Now, Jesus was invited to a wedding. And he had a nerve to show up. To all the church people that think that Jesus is a party pooper, he showed up. And he didn't sit in the corner looking at everyone dancing and say, Thou shalt not dance. He didn't do that. Now, it, if you have Hulu or Netflix or Amazon Prime, pull up a video of Jewish weddings. And you're going to find out they dance the whole time. They dance and dance and dance and dance and dance. You got the man dance. You got the woman dance. You got the couple dance. You got kids dance. You got dance, dance, dance. You got dance, 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 dance. I mean, they just have a good time. And Jesus, I'm sure, was dancing with everybody. And then they ran out of wine. And Jesus trying to water the wine to keep the party going. 
And here it is. We decide, hey, dance is wrong. We shouldn't dance in church. Wait, David danced. So he was in his undergarments. David danced to where he was in his underwear. And Michael said, Oh, you embarrassed me. What kind of king are you doing all that? And David responded, I wish I could be even more vile. I wish I could shake and shimmy even more because I was doing it for God, not for people. I wish I could do it more. I wish I had more body parts to shake. I tried that the other day. My, my kids were laughing and I started doing the shaky, shaky, shaky. And, and uh, then, you know, my kids would start laughing, laughing, laughing because it's like, daddy, shaky, shaky, shaky. It's funny because there's a lot to shake. Hey, I have fun in my house. My kids laugh a lot around me. I'm telling you, I'll start down. Just I'll know out of nowhere, I'll pull out a move, and my kids are like, "That was unexpected," and they just started laughing. Jesus was not a party pooper. Jesus enjoyed being in the party so much so that the little kids wanted to be around him. Do you know anyone that kids want to be around who is a sour person? You know any? I mean, I attract little kids and I attract little kids in other countries. I just show up and here comes the little kids and little kids love me. Well, why? I haven't seen that. I haven't gone to other countries and seen little kids going up after the missionaries. So you kind of stay away. No, you can't talk to him. He's too holy. Can't talk to him. Uh-uh. I love little kids. Come on, little kids. Let me uh, be able to grab on them and give them a hug. Get in there, go in there, go take the picture. Go take the picture of Bishop. I wonder if we should get all the pictures with me and all the kids and all the nations. <laughs> I got lots of kids' pictures. But why is this? Why don't we get the understanding that God is against having fun? God's not against having fun. God wants us to have fun. But God wants us to have the fun the way he prescribes it because it is good for us. Everything good is not good for us. Uh oh No, not what looks good. Everything that's good. Food is good, right, Donna? Food, food is good. Too much food Mucha comida is not good. No es bueno. <laughs> we understand. Entiendo. We can take a good thing that God made and gave it to us as good no ha dado. and now make it not good no bueno. because we're using too Porque much of it. Haciendo, like I love chocolate. Si me gusta el I love chocolate. Y yo amo el chocolate. Sega came by our house and she brought some ice cream and I decided I was going to get some ice cream yesterday and I went to the freezer and looked at the ice cream and saw no chocolate in it. I walked out of the kitchen and oh, there's no chocolate. <laughs> and my daughter uh, Lizzie said, it's my favorite dad. <laughs> yeah, you get to eat it. Me, uh, <laughs> I wanted some chocolate. <laughs> I love chocolate. But too much chocolate with all the extra sugar it has it's not good for me I'm at the age now I feel it if I ate too much of something I don't feel good do y'all hear that if I do too much I don't feel good I have reached that area to where the body says that's enough you need to stop that mess that's enough here's our problem we're going to hear this message 
And all our young folks are going to hear this message and, you know, like Lizzie said that she's adamant about something. I'm not going to do this. And I'm like, Lizzie, you're just 14. At 14, you're not going to do this. But by the time you're 18, you're not going to think like when you're 14. For some reason or another, 14 is smarter than 19. See, all the parents are like, yeah, yeah, 14 is smarter, yes. You get to 19, like, you idiot. <laughs> and then you get older and older and older, and you're like, oh, why did I do that? That was really, really dumb. And it's like, yeah, we were trying to stop you from doing the dumb years. But we got to understand. We were all dummies. And some people just stay there. <laughs> some people don't come out of the dummy years. So, hey, it's not guaranteed that when you get to your 30s, you'll be out of it. You might still be stuck in the same place. We get stuck in a rut. Here's a rut. The same old thinking. The same old results. We think the same way. We're going to get the same results. I, uh, I told one of our... Uh, our young man, when he finished high school, he says, you know, your parents brought you over to this country for you to have it better than they did. So why are you doing the same thing your parents did? Why are you getting the same job that your dad gets? That's not better. That's the same. You understand? That's the same. That's not better. The same old thinking. The same old results. The same thing. Same thing. Parents, aren't you angry with getting the same results? Don't you want to get better results? I want to get better results. Man, I got a child that was like, ooh, 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 ooh. But I've gotten to the point, I'm wasting my spit. I'm just going to keep my mouth closed and let God deal with it. Because I'm at the point now there's nothing I can do. You've heard. Now it's your turn. Now you do. Here's the reality. And I want you to stay with me. I'm almost finished. We're, we're already starting to get permission for the landing. The, the, the wheels are now down, down and at any moment we'll start losing velocity and start coming downward. Okay, so right now we're, we're just circling a little. Every plan for every good parent is for their children to succeed. The problem is the idea of the children of success is not the idea of the parent of success. Parents, your child's idea of success will become their idea of success. But you got to wait a lot longer. See, we didn't gain wisdom in our 20s. We were young and thought we would be eternal because our body reacted to anything we wanted it to do. And it wasn't until we started hurting a little and we started slowing down that we started realizing we are not eternal. And we start using our head to think things through. Whatever seed you have sown, that's what you're going to reap. So parents, what did you sow? I tell this to my sons. I say, I pray that your children will be as difficult as you've been to me. Is that a blessing? It's not a blessing, right? Have any of your parents ever said that to you? And you're wondering why 
necesitan. You have what you got. Because you were not blessed. No eres you were cursed. Está mal That's not a blessing. Eso es, no es una That's a curse. Eso es una Come on, think it through. Bien. Are you getting what your parents put on you? Ooh, I see the looks now like, oh my goodness. I can't complain no more what I got because I planted this. I look at my boys, I said, I didn't plant for you, so I shouldn't be reaping what I'm reaping. I didn't plant this, so I shouldn't be reaping this because I didn't plant it. Then we go back to the planting seeds. A sembrar semillas. There are good things when Hay you plant them, buenas cuando las siembras, but there are also bad things that you didn't plant. Tú no so shouldn't we just be always planting good things because bad stuff come up on their own? Sembrar cosas buenas que salgan solas? No bad things come up on their own. Las cosas malas salen solas. We should be busy. I even got to the point and I told my boys if God blesses you with good children I'm going to fuss at God. Why? Because you give me such a hard time. I need you to experience it so you can understand what a headache you have given me. So some of you are dealing with the curse that has been put upon you. But I think it's time we start breaking curses. I think it's time that those curses that have been put on us get broken. <laughs> I didn't get any amen on that one. I guess we're going to keep our curses. <laughs> It's time to change how we think. It's time that we get a different result. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. John 10, 10. Jesus wants us to have more life. Abundant means more. As Christians, do we have more life? Or do we have less life? I think we have less life. I think that compared to the world, we have less fun. I think because of that, people don't want to be Christians because they keep on looking at us, a bunch of boring folks. We want to be like you. We want to be boring. Man, I remember when I went to Honduras. Oh, we were going to go on a trip and didn't know that we we're going to have so many people accompany us. We could barely fit. And we're like, wait, this is going to be our trip. Yeah, but they want to go. Because y'all are fun. Y'all are fun. So they want to go. And they'll go with us and they'll laugh the whole trip. We got a flat tire and we're on the side of the road laughing. Who laughs because we're having a flat tire? I want to get to where I'm going. But sit there and say, you know what? Crying about it is not going to help me get there faster. I might as well enjoy your company and have fun while we're out here. Oh, look at those chickens. Man, they're small chickens. Yeah, no chickens are small. Are you saying something about our chickens? Yeah, they're small. Your chickens are big. Yeah, our chickens are big. Why are you having a conversation on a chicken, Pastor? Because the chickens were there. <laughs> we're waiting for our tire to get fixed. We talked about everything. Look at that flower. Look at that leaf. Look at that. Whatever we can find, we started a conversation about it. Because we had to wait till they changed the tire. And next thing you know, the tower was changed. And we're like, when did y'all do that? While y'all were talking about the chickens. We were enjoying whatever situation we were in. It didn't matter. We were enjoying stuff. They put something in our mouth, in our hands so we can eat it. We didn't sit there and talk, what is this? 
Is this healthy? Is it unhealthy? Is it kosher? How did they kill it? What? We didn't do any of that. We just stuck it in our mouth. Dude, some things I didn't like. Yeah, Pastor, how do you like it? Mm. You have something else I can try? Because not everything people are going to give you, you're going to like. But I think we should be the abundant people. We should be the ones that are having so much fun that the world is looking at us trying to keep up with us. And my wife's job, they told her every time she comes home, uh, the school, new school year, every time. We saw your pictures. We are all jealous. Yes, honey, yes. They're jealous of the Christian folks. Some of them are married with doctors and attorneys and they make all kind of money but we have more fun wait y'all not getting this they have more money but we have more fun it don't matter how much money they have because we know how to have fun no matter what let it rain we're gonna go outside play in the rain that's gonna be our fun I, I went outside one day, it was raining, I mean, it was pouring, 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 and I decided I'm going to wash my hair because I saw all that rain just falling, and I went underneath all that shooting water coming from the roof and started just washing my hair. My wife took a picture of it and put it on Facebook. And someone responded, that is so healthy for your hair. Rain water is the best thing you can use for hair. What do I care? <laughs> I wasn't doing it because it was healthy for my hair. I was doing it because I grew up that you go play in the rain. And I thought, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to slip and fall if I go and actually play. So at least I'm going to sit here and get wet. <laughs> and someone put their seal of approval. That's good. You're having fun. I have discovered this. When we say we're going somewhere, we have people that want to go with us. Y'all notice that? We have people that want to go with us because we know how to have fun. Now let's get the most boring person in our church and put him in charge on the trip. How many of you are going? No one raise their hand. None of us want to hang out with boring people. <laughs> Man, we went on a cruise. How many people went on a cruise and had fun? I, I don't know anybody who went on a cruise with us who didn't have fun. That was like a world of fun. We had so much fun. When we went to Miami and went to, uh, we went to the airboat and uh, Jungle Queen. Didn't we have fun? We, we had fun. We had fun. Now, here's the irony. We were able to put money and do these fun things and come back and still have money. We didn't come back and it's like, I can't afford my life. We came back and bounced back as if nothing happened. We had fun. We had fun with our family. We had fun with our children. We had so much fun. And what happened when you show the pictures to other people? They get jealous. Did y'all hear me? They get jealous. ¿Cómo que fuiste para eso? ¿Cómo que pudiste? ¿Cuánto dinero te costó? God wants you to have fun and make the world jealous because your fun did not have any guilt in it. You had good, honest, clean fun. What? 
a way to have fun. I have watched Ariel. I don't know anyone in the world that knows to have fun like Ariel does. Every time and every party, she is the party animal. Every time. But she's not sleeping around. She's not vaping. She's not having sex. She's not drinking. She's not doing drugs. Wow. If we put Ariel in charge of a trip, how many are going? Because Ariel knows how to have fun. I watch Ariel during her little classes. And Ariel has fun with those kids. She's doing a dumb class. The Rock Club. I think that's so sad. I'm going to go and I'm going to pay to be in your class. And we're going to talk about my rocks. But she got kids on there that show up with their rocks. Because Ariel can make anything interesting. <laughs> this is my favorite rock. Wow. <laughs> I watched her. I wanted to go out there and get me a rock too. <laughs> I want to be part of your rock collection group. Go find me a favorite rock. <laughs> Why? Because she's fun. And everywhere she goes, people like fun folks. So get out of the social group. Because the social group is just going to make you feel bad about yourself. And get into the spiritual fun group. Then I have certain things that God has told me this is okay to do. And these things make me feel good. Let me have fun doing those things. I remember looking at something that I wanted to do. I wanted to go on a zip line. Not the one on the ship. I wanted to go on one that lasts 15 minutes. And you just... And I thought, man, that's a long time. And Ariel said, Dad, let's do it. Uh, yeah, let's do it, Ariel. Then I looked at the price, and it was $700 a person. And I said, honey, not this time. <laughs> it's too expensive. I think I'll, for $700, I can hook up my own line. <laughs> do my own zip thing. Oh, goodness. <laughs> God wants you to have fun the right way. Young folks, you're at that age to where you do stupid things. I'll have to quote Forrest Gump. Stupid is what stupid does. If you're not doing stupid things, you're not stupid. But if you are doing stupid things, you might be. If it's productive, whatsoever is good, whatsoever can bring a good report, think on these things. God wants you to change the little silly things that you're doing. And pastor's not judging you. I'm not. I mean, my years of doing that, I used to be so dogmatic about everything, and then I realized that Jesus covered all of this already. So you sin. I'm telling you, get up and walk right. Come on, get up. 
You did it. Come on, get up. Don't stay down there. Learn from it. Get better. If you're the one that has been following after somebody and it's in some of these categories that I've mentioned today, wake up. They don't make you feel better. They make you feel worse. Stop and think about it after you finish doing it. Do I feel better? Does this bring joy to me? Is it a temporary joy? Because I mentioned us going on the cruise, and all of a sudden, those that went got happy again. So it was not temporary. It is something that can come back up again. It's a good memory. So when you stop and contemplate it, it's like, man, you remember going on those four wheelers with those helmets? And you remember how much fun? You remember having tried to keep your legs away from that heat plate thing because it got too hot? <laughs> See, we can talk about these things. You remember going on that airboat and when that man got you all wet with that muddy water? You see, these are things that I can tell you, and it all of a sudden it's like makes you smile. That's a good thing. It's, like it's a good memory. It is amazing when someone is in a coma, you can talk about the things that were good memories, and they might not come out of the coma, but you will see a difference in their brain patterns just from a good memory. Let's build on those. Stop following, because God made us to lead. Stop following. I got two daughters, and both of my daughters don't follow anybody. Sometimes I got to remind them I'm the leader of my house. Because, you know, they both will stand up and give me their opinion. And then I'm like, uh, when you get your own house, your opinion matters. In my house, it's my opinion that counts. And I can tell you, Lizzie can't wait to get her own house so she can have her own opinion. <laughs> can't wait. Can't wait to have my own roof. I, I know she'll probably be the first child to tell me that I'm underneath my own roof. And I'll be like, what you trying to say? She'll be I'm just kidding. I hope everybody got something out of this today. Because even though we have this social distancing, we have a social conformity. The Bible says for us to renew our minds. Make your minds new. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. No more mindset, I'm going to conform to what you say are your social norms, but instead, I'm going to start wearing that transformer logo. I think I'm going to put that on Lizzie's car, transformer, that little transformer logo. If she likes it, because it's her car. But be transformed. We're the first transformers, y'all. <laughs> be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I might even just put the music and make it a theme song for Transformers More Than Meets the Eye. <laughs> I think that's what we all should be. Didn't that go with the message today? Transformers. More than meets the eye. I'm looking forward to having some powerhouse youth. To have youth that can't wait to go to Bible study instead of missing all the Bible studies because they want to be cool. I'm telling you, there'll be no cool section in heaven because I think we're all going to be cool.
There's certainly not going to be any cool section in hell. There certainly won't be a cool section in hell, I'm telling you. I'm going to be in my mansion. And I actually think that I will not be able to remember anyone that didn't make it to heaven. I believe those memories will be deleted. So if you're one of those that don't get to make it because you're stubborn, I don't think I could remember you because the Bible says, and he shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There'll be no more death, neither sorrow, neither the pain. So the thought of you brings me pain. And God removes the pain. How about we all just make it to heaven together and be able to party over there? I'm going to have a body that doesn't get tired, doesn't get achy, <laughs> don't have to drink lots and lots and lots of water. <laughs> but we get to eat, Donna, we get to eat. In heaven, we get to eat. There'll be a banquet set before us. I can't wait to taste that stuff. Ooh, always perfect. Never under salt or over salt. <laughs> always perfect. The perfect more than five Michelin star chefs <laughs> sitting there preparing a food for us. Now, what would our church be like? If all of us were a church party animal, what would praise and worship be like if we were all party animals? I mean, come on. If you had to rate our praise and worship in our audience, one being the lowest, 10 being the highest, what would be your rating? I see a three, I see a four, a two. I see nothing on this side. No one voted. I see a one, a three, a two. I think we're stuck around three. Now, how many people want to go to a three church? No one, right? A three? I mean, five is an F. <laughs> a three is a 30. A five is a 50. A six would be a D. A seven would be a C. And we're talking about minuses here. We got a lot of work to do. So while you're trying to follow the world and be social, we're failing in what is really the real party. We are the real party. The world should want to be like us, not us try to be like the world. In all these TV shows, why do we keep seeing them trying to preach to us the gay lifestyle? Because they're trying to change what God has said, that is our lifestyle, to make it okay. They want to feel okay with their own choices. So they keep putting it down your throat. So they can feel good with their choices. But if we all felt good with their choices, their hearts will still feel guilty. Because God's laws are written on the tablets of our heart. We have one of our young ladies that said, no matter what she does, she's never going to be accepted by my family. 
criticada por su familia. And I thought it was weird that she would say that. Por qué dijo eso ella? I said, we don't ever treat you bad. Nunca la tratamos mal. Don't call you names. We don't shun ourselves from you. La tratamos mal. Why is it that you will feel that way? I think she feels that way because she's chosen to live a different lifestyle that is contrary to our lifestyle. And until we were to say your lifestyle is okay, she's always going to feel we're going to be contrary to her. Well, we're not contrary. She is. You understand? So we need to change our viewpoint. Our 11, 12, 13, 20s, I would hate to be where you are because it was hard when I was your age. I think it's harder now. Just trying to find a couple in bed for the PowerPoint. I feel so nasty. <laughs> I had to get back focused because I hit that image and boy, I got images that I didn't ask for. I even wrote clean version of mine, clean. Want it? Sex image, clean version. They just got something else from clean version than I thought. And your fingertips, you get to see things that we had to sneak around to find. It wasn't at our fingertips. We had to work diligently to try to even see one of those images. You guys have it so right there. And don't know that these things causes a change in your brain. And we don't even have time to discuss that. But you view it one time and your brain rewires itself. Just one time. Solo una vez. <laughs> Let's pray. Vamos a orar. Father, we thank you. Señor, te damos Lord God, our society has focused itself on enjoyment, en our bringing pleasure for the moment. Lord God, but our society Señor, does not know how to have a long-term pleasure. Father, that our young people were to understand, we're not trying for them to stop having fun. We just want them to have fun for the rest of their lives. Lord God, for them not to experience fun burnout. Lord God, keep them away from those things that can harm them. Lord God, and make us all better that we can be a better example to the world of what the church of God is. We ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. You guys have seen that commercial, This Is Your Brain on Drugs, right?